it's Wes, Super Wes that is. In this video, I want to explain the SIMV mode, and in particular on the LTV ventilator. Although the SIMV mode is pretty uniform in other ventilators also. SIMV stands for Synchronous Intermittent Mechanical Ventilation. Let me explain to you what it does. In this instance, we're on a volume type breath. So the volume is, is highlighted, but the pressure control is dim. That means it's inactive and we are not going to chart it. Doesn't matter what this says. The SIMV is a weaning mode. That means we expect these people to, to be weaned off the ventilator. They have the ability to take a breath on their own and usually they've been on the ventilator for a little while and if it's and we want to build their muscles back up, build up their endurance, and so they can breathe on their own again and have their trach tube or the endotracheal tube removed. So in this example, the ventilator is going to give 20 breaths per minute. That's the very minimum that they're going to get is 20 breaths per minute. They can initiate extra breaths and as many as they want. Now each breath will be given a 500 milliliters of volume. Every one of these big deep breaths. And it'll give that 500 milliliters. The only thing that'll stop it, the ventilator from giving this 500 milliliters of volume is if the pressure goes too high because it'll keep pushing harder and harder until it gives us 500 milliliters. And it will do that, right now it's only going to about 20, but it'll do that in this case until it reaches 45, which is the high pressure limit. If it does reach that 45 pressure, it'll stop that breath immediately, let them exhale, and but try again with the very next breath to give that 500 milliliters of volume. So 20 breaths a minute, 500 milliliters of volume, and the inspiratory time, that means every breath is given over one second. We can do that a lot faster, a little bit slower, depending on their age group. But this, we expect this person to be able to take, uh, to initiate a breath on their own. But we have to tell the ventilator that they want a breath, or they have to tell the ventilator that they want a breath. And that's where the sensitivity comes in. In this case, it's in liters per minute. So if this person tries to take a breath and pulls two liters a minute of oxygen, of air in, it will, it will tell the machine, hey, I want another breath. And, and it will let them take that breath on their own because we want them to build their muscles and, and to, to get more used to breathing on their own again. But there are six feet of tubing that they have to breathe through and a trach tube or an endotracheal tube. It's like a big McDonald's straw. So it's not very easy to do. So the doctor usually calculates the resistance of the tubing and he'll write an order for pressure support. What the pressure support does is that helps to overcome the resistance of the tubing and the trach tube or the endotracheal tube. So if they initiate an extra breath, it will give them 13 of pressure just to help overcome that tubing. And they can still try to take a breath on their own. So they'll, they'll probably, but it'll make it a lot easier. And this is especially important when we first start weaning them off the ventilator. With adults over time, they will decrease this value and, and to, to build, up their, uh, build up their respiratory muscles. With a child, this usually stays the same because usually even when they're ready to wean off the vent, they don't have the strength to pull that air all the way through the ventilator tubing. And plus they don't, their lungs don't hold a lot of volume. With an infant or a child, the sensitivity is typically at one. And depending on the patient, from a toddler on up to an adult, there's usually two. Sometimes you'll have to go up to three, but usually two is a pretty good number. A reason why SIMV is so good for weaning patients off the ventilator is that it gives, in this instance, 20 breaths per minute, 20 of the big deep breaths, but it lets them trigger extra breaths in between. But it won't let them wear themselves out because it, they'll start at a higher breath rate when they start weaning and it'll give 20 breaths per minute and anything in between, it'll they'll let them take the breath by themselves. And as you can see here, when they take an extra breath, it'll say patient effort and it, the pressure will only go up to 13 because that's the pressure support that's helping them overcome the tubing. But if they take a, one of these extra breaths within a fraction of a second of the time that it's supposed to give a mandatory breath, it will synchronize with them. That's why the S is in that name, synchronous. It'll synchronize with them and give them the big deep breath at that time. So they can take more and more breaths on their own. But as they start getting more accustomed to it and, and they, they can breathe better on their own, the doctor will start turning that breath rate down. It usually by increments of two until finally it gets down to either four or six. And at that point, they're taking a lot of the breaths on their own, or most of them on their own. Then when they do all right with six breaths per minute or four breaths per minute, 
the next step would be to turn the breath rate completely off. And then we'll talk about that in the next video about CPAP. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.